I had my DNC almost two months ago and basically I had to get there an hour before my procedure was scheduled. That way they could register me, get me in my gown, you know, ask me a bunch of questions, get the IV going, and that's where they administer the um, anesthesia that puts you under because they do put you under for this procedure. And it happened very quickly. And I've watched a lot of videos about people like actually recording while they're at the clinic or hospital where they're getting it done and they do before and after while they're waiting and all this stuff. And like, I did not have to really wait at all. And I was in and out of the hospital within like two and a half hours because I got there at six and I left about 8.30 in the morning. You're not allowed to eat or drink anything after midnight. So if you're able to get a morning procedure, I definitely would recommend that because not being able to eat like after you're up for a while would be really hard. Obviously it's doable, but like, why would you want to be starving? <laughs> so I got the earliest that I could. That way it would just be easier. And, um, I mean, it just, it went really well. There was no complications whatsoever. They asked me if I wanted anything to eat or drink when I woke up and I opted for water and some shortbread cookies or something like that. Literally I woke up and like maybe within 20 minutes to a half hour I was able to actually leave after I had the procedure done. Um, they wheeled me on a wheelchair and I went about my day and I will say, like, I'm trying to remember, not like I forgot, but, you know, it has been a little while since this has happened, but that day that I had the procedure, I was a little crampy. They gave me ibuprofen for that, so I did take some that day because I was kind of crampy, like, more crampy than usual. I don't usually experience cramps for my periods, so when I have cramping, it's just really unusual for me. So, took the ibuprofen, I went about my day, I actually went out to eat that night at Olive Garden. This was before the virus, so this was before we were able to even, you know, this was when we were able to still go out and eat. And of course my mom is calling me, I literally can't do anything without being bothered. Why? So anyway, I had constipation for a little while, which is completely normal, I was told. It has something to do with the anesthesia in your body. It can cause you to be constipated. But after that day, honestly, I felt like myself. They do say that you're not supposed to have sex for two weeks. You're not supposed to use tampons. Nothing is supposed to go up there because in a way you are healing. Obviously, it's nothing compared to having actual birth. The baby was very, 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 very tiny. It was still just like the yolk sac. So there was really not that much in there to get rid of. As far as the bleeding, I bled really lightly for like, I think 10 to 12 days. I don't remember exactly. I think I quit bleeding at 10 days, actually. 10, I don't know. Somewhere between, between 10 and 12. I can't remember exactly, but it was not the full two weeks. I quit bleeding before that. I quit bleeding before I had my appointment, actually. <laughs> so I was able to get away with wearing thongs and I would put my panty liners that they make for thongs in my underwear. There were only a couple times where it went off the side a little bit, but that's because I work at like a high, phys highly physical job. I'm constantly walking and on my feet, so I can see how underwear could have gotten like moved a little bit but other than that it was really not that bad at all like it was like a super duper light period so the one thing that I did have happen to me which is kind of common but um you know after you have a procedure like that especially down there you are more like susceptible to getting infections and I'm pretty sure I got a um, UTI and I didn't get tested for it but based on my symptoms, they just gave me a prescription for a UTI and it actually made it go away. Basically, it like came out of nowhere. I felt like I had to pee a lot, like really frequently. And then the next day I went to work and it was even worse. I felt like I had to pee 24-7 and it was like 
one of the most uncomfortable feelings I've ever felt and I've never had a UTI before so I didn't know what to compare it to. I just know that I had that feeling and then TMI but while I was while I was going towards the end of going I could feel like a tightness it wasn't I wouldn't want to say pain but like uncomfortableness that was turning into pain. I don't really know how to explain it. I'm very bad at explaining different pain feelings. I just, I've never been good at it. Doctor will always ask like, explain how you're feeling. I'm like, uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. So yeah, I called them, I explained to them what was going on and that it was uncomfortable and they talked to my doctor about it. She said she was just gonna prescribe me with a UTI antibiotic and I took that and it went away very quickly, which I'm very grateful for because it was just really unpleasant. Other than all of that, it went really well. Here we are. Weeks later, I am... I was debating for a while whether or not we wanted to keep trying for a child or if we wanted to wait considering the situation that we're currently in right now in life. And... Well, I guess we'll find out very soon whether or not we are going to be having a baby. I don't know. We'll find out. It's kind of up in the air. But anyway, I just wanted to get this video out there to tell you guys my experience, what I went through, because I've heard some bad things, but I've mostly heard good things. And depending on where you live in the world, it, things are done differently. So just kind of wanted to tell you guys what I went through. But it was it was a simple process and it's been done and over with yeah i don't know what else to say i'm gonna go now <laughs> thank you guys for watching i'll see you next time bye